Santa Monica is a vibrant coastal community defined by diverse and thriving neighborhoods, our beautiful coastline, economic opportunity, and that quintessential Santa Monica charm. Here you can enjoy the outdoors, walk, run, rollerblade, or bike to your heart's content, or take a relaxing hike in the Santa Monica Mountains, celebrate a mix of communities and cultures, or take advantage of the tremendous opportunities available to a leading edge city. Keeping Santa Monica on a clear and thriving path takes tremendous efforts of countless people working together to get things done for its residents. So let's take a look at some of the remarkable things our boards and commissions accomplished in the past year. Our shared spaces. Our shared public spaces reflect the city of Santa Monica's character and uniqueness. They represent our community's commitment to making Santa Monica an open and inviting place. We strive to develop and maintain sustainable environments that are thoughtfully designed to bring residents together. I'm standing here in Ishihara Park, a new two-acre neighborhood park named after World War II veteran and longtime Santa Monica resident, George Ishihara. The park features exercise stations and gathering spaces that encourage good health and community spirit. The design reflects our collective desire for cultural and natural diversity and is uniquely represented by each of the eight room-like garden spaces, featuring a different aspect of Southern California's landscape and includes the city's first learning garden. In the past year, the Commission also provided significant input on the LA County Parks Needs Assessment, which led to the passing of a parks funding measure in 2016. Our work stimulated considerable community involvement and valuable information for the city as they prioritize future capital improvements, such as the expansion of airport and memorial parks. The renovations, activations, and expansions of our shared spaces foster good health and offer opportunities for people and communities to connect. Working with city staff, we provided input for the update of the local coastal plan on issues impacting the future of the pier relating to climate change, sustainability, additional modes of transportation, and enhanced opportunities. We saw the launch of the Expo Line, which brought new visitors and new dynamics and accessibility to the pier. We supported this highly anticipated launch with public outreach campaigns, tips on wayfinding, and regular security briefings. We continued the rich tradition of popular and diverse community programs across music, film, active lifestyle, and education categories. In keeping with our mission to attract a diverse audience of all incomes and backgrounds, all of our events were free to the public thanks to the generous support of our community partners. The Santa Monica Pier continues to be one of the city's most valuable community assets, a national treasure offering a lively mix of experiences and attractions. Maintaining a healthy urban forest is one of the keys to preserving the character and charm of the city's vibrant landscape. In 2016, our Urban Forest Task Force revisited and updated the city's tree species designations to add resilience, diversity, and sustainability to Santa Monica's urban forest. Now, they also developed and launched the Heritage Tree Program to celebrate the very best public trees in Santa Monica, just like the one I'm standing next to right now in Palisades Park. There are over 33,000 trees in Santa Monica's urban forest. If you laid them out end to end, they would stretch from the Santa Monica Pier all the way to Palm Springs. Our urban forest is a vital part of the city's green infrastructure, reducing carbon emissions, pollutants, and other particulate matter from the air. Recent rains have filled the reservoir I'm standing on top of here in Los Amigos Park. That will save 55,000 gallons of drinking water annually by storing both wet and dry weather storm drain runoff for use in athletic field irrigation and toilet flushing. 
The project was a collaboration among Santa Monica Malibu School District, the Metropolitan Water District, and the City of Santa Monica. And it will further the city's goal toward water self-sufficiency and also protect the water of Santa Monica Bay. In addition, we also installed permeable materials designed to capture alley and tributary runoff in collaboration with the citywide alley repair initiative. Santa Monica continues to be on the leading edge of developing innovative solutions as the Los Amigos Park Retrofit Project is the first of its kind to use stormwater for indoor use, toilet flushing, and irrigation. What is more important to you than fresh air, clean water, nutritious food, and essential shelter? Our health and very survival depends on our access to these essential resources. And that's why we continue to leverage the diverse expertise of the Task Force on the Environment to advise city leaders on a wide range of challenges facing our city. We advise City Council to adopt climate action and resiliency policies that have led to the city reducing its greenhouse gas emissions by 20% from its 1990 levels with the goal of reaching carbon neutrality by 2050. We also advise the City Council on the world's first zero net energy building requirement for new residential construction where projects will generate as much energy from renewable sources as they use from the power utility over the course of a year. Working together, we can keep Santa Monica on the leading edge, a global model of a truly sustainable city. Our mobility and infrastructure Santa Monica is a multimodal city. People come to and move throughout the city in many different ways. We continue to optimize Santa Monica's mobility options and infrastructure for those traveling by foot, bike, bus, car, and train. In 2016, the city made significant improvements to its transportation network including approval of the Pedestrian Action Plan and commitment to Vision Zero, the opening of Metro Expo, the launch of Go Sammo, its citywide mobility campaign, and the creation of our transportation management organization to assist businesses, residents, and visitors in finding and offering mobility options. We also recommended approval of 379 units of new housing, like this one here on 2nd Street. Almost all of them are in downtown, super close to great transportation options. In addition to that, in 2016, we approved a new child care center as well as a city services building. With a city as dynamic as Santa Monica, careful and thoughtful planning is key to ensuring that our new model of mobility, one that includes every mode, continues to meet the ever-changing demands of our city. Santa Monica reached a historic agreement with the Federal Aviation Administration, and the city is on a path to closing its airport by 2028. With this critical milestone achieved, the Commission fully supported the city's proposed multi-acre expansion project at Airport Park. To create efficiencies, we advise that Santa Monica develop its own Fixed Space Operations Service, or FBO, meaning that until 2028, the city itself would be able to carry out tasks like refueling and maintenance rather than a third-party organization. We also recommended that the city investigate more secure procedures for airfield and aircraft access, resulting in the engagement of a security consultant tasked with preparing a report to help us address this issue. The proposed airport park expansion represents an important example of how the city continues to seek ways to redevelop urban land for sustainable purposes, benefiting the whole community. In 2016, we saw significantly more concept reviews, especially along Lincoln Boulevard and Colorado Boulevard. These important streetscapes in the city will see great transformation over the next several years as these projects are completed. 
We also approve projects at several key commercial locations like this one on Cloverfield that will create a more pedestrian friendly environment and improve the overall streetscape along our key boulevards. For Santa Monica, the architectural review process has been vital in making sure that proposed projects move through the approval process while also providing multiple opportunities for feedback. Strengthening our buildings by retrofitting is the best way to save lives and infrastructure during an earthquake. That's why in 2016, we heard recommendations for the technical seismic retrofit standards addressing older, more vulnerable buildings. As a result, we recommended an amendment to the Santa Monica construction standards for higher order of building design and construction for seismic resistance. We also recommended amendments that would require electrical capacity for vehicle charging in new commercial buildings increase energy efficiency above the minimum California standards, require solar photovoltaics for new residential and commercial buildings, and would launch the state's first zero net energy compliance requirement for new single family homes. Careful examination of the city's existing building infrastructure and review of our construction and retrofit standards is vital in protecting and maintaining the safety of our Santa Monica community. most exciting developments for the Landmarks Commission in 2016 was the launch of our Historic Resources Inventory Update. We began our public outreach efforts in the beginning of last year and our project consultant team has been busy ever since, driving up and down each and every street of Santa Monica, updating our existing records, and looking for new potential landmarks. We also designated two new landmarks in 2016, the Santa Monica Bay Telephone Company building at 3355 Barnard Way and this location, in front of the row of commercial buildings between 1601 and 1613 Oceanfront Rock, right at the base of the landmark Santa Monica Pier. These were both very exciting designations located in highly visible oceanfront locations. Preserving our city's landmarks and historic buildings is essential to sustaining the rich cultural history of Santa Monica's unique urban landscape. Our health. A good quality of life begins with our physical and emotional health. Santa Monica supports a range of health-promoting resources that help individuals, families, and neighborhoods thrive. The Metropolitan Water District delivers 1.5 billion gallons of water per day to more than 19 million people within six counties in Southern California. Conservation continues to be the focus of our city, and one great example of this is where we are right now. With our leadership, a new Conservation and Local Resources Committee has been formed to bring together staff expertise and board interest in supporting local conservation and water use efficiency projects within our region. Santa Monica's involvement in this critical supplier helps us to ensure that the future needs of the city are met in an environmentally friendly and economically responsible way. We are responsible for eliminating, controlling, and educating about vectors. Vectors such as mosquitoes, bees, and ticks are capable of transmitting human disease and producing human discomfort or injury. In 2016, 153 West Nile virus infections and five fatalities were documented in LA County, with none occurring in Santa Monica. There were 162 requests in Santa Monica for bee services, my specialty, and no local LA transmission of the Zika virus. In general, Prevention is critical and involves avoiding contact with mosquitoes, so use an insect repellent, cover up, have screens for windows and doors, and dump and drain standing water to avoid breeding. And don't forget to check your rain barrels and pet dishes, as they can be a breeding source. 
we continue to educate the public about vector transmitted diseases and district services. Be aware, be safe. Time for me to make a beeline out of here. Prevention of vector-borne diseases, particularly through mosquitoes, is critical to the overall health of our community. I'm standing at our LA County Department of Public Social Services mobile unit in Virginia Avenue Park, which assists community members with applications for CalFresh and other non-cash benefits, including affordable health care programs like Medi-Cal, Medicare, and the Medicare Savings Program. This is just one great example of how our city advances well-being for the most vulnerable. In 2016, our agenda included homelessness policy, wraparound social services for those facing housing insecurity, the draft downtown community plan, and LGBT inclusion. We built collaborative relationships with the Housing Commission and the Cradle to Career Task Force. And we helped sponsor the Next Steps graduation ceremony right here at the Virginia Avenue Park Teen Center. On policy matters, we encouraged our city council to adopt a fair chance ordinance to reduce barriers to employment for formerly incarcerated individuals. And we recommended that council endorse Measure H, the countywide plan to prevent and combat homelessness. Santa Monica works diligently to preserve and enhance the quality of life for all of its residents through ongoing dialogue, outreach, education, and advocacy. With the help of over 25 community partners, we created a series of events during Women's History Month in March, including an opening reception at City Hall and this art exhibit featuring over 125 kids in local fifth grade classes showcasing the women they admire. Working together with the Rent Control Board and the City Attorney's Office, we presented a segment on domestic violence and women's issues at their annual seminar on hot topics and tenants' rights. In 2016, Santa Monica became the first city in LA County to enforce the law mandating certain businesses to publicly post human trafficking hotline information. Santa Monica remains committed to advancing the status of women in our community through investigation of, advocacy for, and developing policy around the issues relevant to women and girls. Our community learning together. Santa Monica offers a diverse range of programs, projects and services, all with one simple focus, people. Our programs and events are purposefully designed to enrich the lives of the community, culturally, socially, and physically. We're here at the newly renovated Fairview branch on Ocean Park Boulevard with its new carpeting and paint, improved interior lighting, new shelving for books and media collections, and more self-checkout stations. No waiting. In 2016, we packed up our books and went to the beach for some fun in the sun. Visitors to our Seaside Library pop-ups signed out books from our curated collection of beach reads, enjoyed a variety of beach games, or just relaxed and read in the shade of our Surfside Lounge. We're also proud to report that Santa Monica Public Library was honored as a five-star library by Library Journal for a seventh year in a row. With over 2.1 million in-person and virtual visitors, nearly 2,000 library programs, and 65,000 library program participants. So check us out. Our Santa Monica Public Library performs a vital role in creating, stimulating, and supporting an informed, educated community.
We're here at the Ken Edwards Center, home to one of our community partners, Wise and Healthy Aging, which has been providing services to older adults for over 40 years. Working together with Wise and Healthy Aging and the Older Adult Task Force, we developed a resource guide for older adults on the west side and created a comprehensive resource list for active living opportunities for seniors. In 2016, we also educated our commissioners on the issue of climate change and its impact on the senior community. We then sponsored a climate change presentation for the entire community working together with City TV to film the presentation for later use as a training tool. Connecting seniors to available services and programs enhances their everyday life and helps them remain vital, connected members of the community. We're working together with the city we expanded the access to our lovely beaches by establishing accessible paths across the sand. We've made motorized and manual beach chairs available to the public free of charge and installed signage to advance the goal of accessibility. We advocated for the city's first universally accessible playground designed so that children of all abilities can play together at the South Beach Park. A second such playground is on its way to the beach at Montana Avenue. We work with the Office of Emergency Management to advise them on preparedness for people with disabilities. Santa Monica works diligently to enhance accessibility in our transportation, housing, and shared facilities and continues to raise awareness regarding the importance of belonging in our schools, the workplace, and community. I'm standing here on Colorado and Maine in front of Anne Marie Carlson's incredible public art piece, Wheels. It's a great example of how the Arts Commission seeks to introduce art into Santa Monica's public spaces. In 2016, the Arts Commission reviewed the downtown community plan and provided recommendations on expanding the presence and impact of the arts in downtown, including encouraging public-private partnerships to promote robust art activities throughout open and underutilized spaces, supporting creative placemaking projects that promote city goals such as mobility, and adopting policies that expand options for live music and the performing arts. They also began a high-level discussion on the future of the arts and culture in Santa Monica, developing a framework for the upcoming 10-year cultural planning process, which renews the 2007 Creative Capital Cultural Plan. Enriching the creative capital of Santa Monica through an ever-expanding, culturally diverse community of artists and arts organizations is essential to the cultural, educational, social, and economic vitality of our city. Our economic opportunity. A vibrant, diverse local economy that supports a strong base of employment and opportunities for job growth help to create an environment for people to achieve and thrive. We're standing outside of Belmar Apartments, 160 unit residence for low income families. It's just one of the many examples demonstrating the city's commitment to developing increasing levels of access for all Santa Monica families. In 2016, one of our main accomplishments involved making recommendations to City Council regarding two November 2016 ballot measures to establish local funding source for affordable housing both of which were approved by Santa Monica voters. The quarter cent sales tax increase is estimated to generate approximately $8 million annually for affordable housing. We also recommended City Council at least match from existing general funds the sums raised by the sales tax increase, and City Council began to do this in 2016 by directing that all redevelopment agency loan repayments go into an affordable housing fund. Santa Monica remains committed to preserving existing affordable housing and creating new housing opportunities for residents with low and moderate incomes.
2016 saw a marked increase in the withdrawal of controlled rental units in Santa Monica under the State Ellis Act. Careful analysis of the contributing factors is needed, which will help the city develop policies that respond to those factors and prevent further loss of controlled housing through this route. Responding to the significant increases in market rate rents, we adopted regulations that adjusted upward the maximum dollar amounts for rent decreases that may be granted for reductions in maintenance or housing services. We will continue to monitor market rate rents as well as withdrawals from rent control pursuant to the Ellis Act. Our Rent Control Board, through its collaborative efforts with other city departments, strives to increase efficiencies and to ensure compliance with our rent control law, which helps us maintain an inclusive and diverse community. The function of the Personnel Board is to hold public hearings on matters related to the civil service and to recommend to the City Council the adoption, amendment, or repeal of targeted rules and regulations. We also hear appeals of any officer or employee of the classified service who's been suspended, demoted, or removed. In 2016, we heard numerous disciplinary appeals and approved over 50 job descriptions that were either newly created or modified to reflect changes in the duties and responsibilities of the positions. Our personnel board helps to ensure Santa Monica maintains the best employees, ones who meet the city's high standards of public service to its citizens. In 2016, tourism continued to be one of the most significant local contributors to Santa Monica's thriving and sustainable economy. With visitor spending at $1.87 billion, over 13,000 jobs generated that can't be exported, and $51 million added to the city's general fund through transit occupancy tax. Our innovative programs help Santa Monica achieve an annual average occupancy of 84.3% and an average daily rate of $342. In 2016, we were acknowledged by our industry peers with the Best Idea Award from Destination Marketing Association West for our partnership campaign with Australian fashion brand Witchery. We also received a Travel Weekly Award for the I Am Santa Monica Destination Brand and Customer Service Program. The city continuously looks for ways to increase visitor expenditures, tourism revenues, and local employment opportunities through the promotion of Santa Monica as a premier travel destination. In 2016, we brought additional life to the promenade with the installation of 16 decorative art banners featuring the indigenous flora and fauna of Santa Monica. Our hospitality and maintenance ambassador program was responsible for picking up and properly disposing nearly 180,000 pieces of trash while responding to 3,220 incidents of graffiti. We also helped over 77,000 people find restaurants, stores, and even their cars. Our marketing program generated 600 million media impressions, and we produced a number of free, family-friendly events, including Picnic on the Promenade, Ice at Santa Monica, and the official City of Santa Monica tree lighting celebration. Maintaining our vibrant downtown is an essential part of promoting the continued economic vitality of Santa Monica. And our trend-setting, beachside community remains a first-rate shopping, dining, and entertainment destination for the world. Santa Monica did something that had not been done by any U.S. city. Working together, we defined, measured, and created specific action plans centered on factors that contribute to our city's well-being. To accomplish this, we asked ourselves probing questions. Like, do I feel empowered to make change? Am I happy, healthy, and connected to the community? Am I able to access opportunities for lifelong learning? Without the answers to these critical questions, we would have no way of understanding the cumulative impact of the city's work. 
and we wouldn't be challenged to manage our resources to improve results. In our presentations, we've shared with you how the boards and commissions fit within the city's well-being framework. Our place and planet, reflected in our efforts in environmental sustainability, the city's shared spaces, mobility options, and infrastructure. Our health, economic opportunity, as well as our community connectedness and learning. We've comprehensively measured how our citizens and communities fare on these significant indicators in our well-being index. And with this wealth of data now in hand, we are better able to align resources, programs, and policies to drive improvements and to help Santa Monicans thrive. Visitors to Santa Monica might think our city begins and ends with the iconic Santa Monica Pier and Third Street Promenade of Shops. But for the 94,000 people who live here, we know Santa Monica to be a complex community grappling with complex challenges. But fused in Santa Monica's DNA is the notion that it's not just about doing something for only a few people. We want our impact to include those most vulnerable, most marginalized in our community. That's why our new framework helps us to identify priorities and shape initiatives with an intense focus on our community's well-being. It helps us see where things are going well and where there are gaps that need attention. We've done such a good job implementing our new approach of integrating well-being throughout city government. That now at least 80 different cities, schools, universities, and nonprofits are seeking to model their well-being initiatives after ours. Santa Monica took a bold new step and set out to do something that had never before been done by any other U.S. city. And a decade or two from now, when, when we, we look, look back, back on, on what we created, created together, together, we'll, we'll celebrate, celebrate the, the fact that Santa, Santa Monica was designed for our well-being. As evidenced by this year's Boards and Commissions Report, working together is essential in continuing to be a strong and thriving community. Santa Monica learned early what cities around the world are currently recognizing. Economic growth alone does not ensure a community's success. True measures of progress must also be taken into account by the well-being of its people.